What's up, my miners of intelligence and consciousness? I'm Rick Brooks, and this is Rick's Mind. Today with me, we've got a treat. We've got Agent Sebastian from Cartnarks. What's going on, man? Oh, just out here uh, <laughs> taking a small break from narking, but uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> So, so I think I think it would behoove us uh, to for you to let us know what cart what what cart narcs is, and uh, so for the people that might not know listening, and uh, how this whole thing got started. Oh well, cart narcs is a public service that encourages people as politely as possible to return their shopping cart when they're done with it to the cart corral and not just leave it in the middle of a spot or a wedge between spots or up on a curb or blah, 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 blah. Any other places they leave it that is not the cart return, parentheses, where they know it's supposed to go. So we go, we do that. And then how it started is um, less glamorous than most, uh, quote, uh, superheroes. <laughs> you know, there wasn't any, any gamma rays or uh, bitten by spiders or anything like that. It was just me and a friend talking about in the office one day about things, you know, pet peeves that involve courtesy, essentially. It, it, like I mentioned with the cart return, things that people know they should be doing that they don't. And typically out of laziness or just lack of conscientiousness. They're either oblivious or they're just flat out lazy. Um, and the carts, shopping carts are kind of the ones where it was like it was centralized. You know where carts are going to be left out, parking lots. Um, whereas other things in this realm of of a you know of people uh, not picking up after their dogs or not washing their hands in the bathroom or not taking their weights back at the gym. The gym one is a pretty good one actually. I, I don't happen to own a gym, so <laughs> but that's on my list of things to do. But yeah, it was just hey, let's go or not let's, let me go talk to these people and see why they don't do it. And from there, it just kind of spiraled, uh, I guess some would say out of control or, or in control, depending on how you look at it. I think it's I think it's in control, man. So, I mean, essentially, you've got a YouTube channel called Cartnarks, and you film these reactions. And, dude, some of them are fucking hilarious. Some of them are pretty scary. Like, what, someone, someone pulled, how many guns have you had pulled on you? Only one actual gun that I've seen that was in Texas, and then I've had a, the threat of a gun several times after that, and I, um, it's, or before, before during, and after that, uh, it, it's sort of weird is that there was one I did a few months ago here in the LA area where the guy, after trying to like back me down, he was getting out and kind of like bowing up, sort of like prison style, and eventually he said he was going to go get his gun, or he had a gun, and I... <laughs> And in the past, that's I've like backed down at that point. Well, if they're threatening me with a gun, which doesn't seem very legal, no, I should probably not. back off. But at this point, I, it's happened so many times now. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> which some might say tactically could be very stupid of me. Uh, but in this case, here it was a Korea town in the south, or central LA, and uh, he did. He never did that. He just he just puffed and puffed, chased me around for a little bit, and then drove off. Yeah. So, how are you filming in? You're filming all over the United States uh, to, to at different uh, shopping places, shopping centers, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You uh, in Canada and the UK and Australia uh, so far. Yeah. And is is it just you? <laughs> yeah. There is. A, this is a a question that it's not a bad question because I have have like friends who who ask me that. Like, I know you do this character and that, but there's other people. No, it is just me. It's sort of a part of the fun and silliness of it. Um, so, like, for instance, I'll go to the Louisiana area, you know, Baton Rouge and New Orleans and do, like, a water boy accent or go to the New York City area and do, like, a like a Tony, like, a, like an Andrew Dice Clay sort of accent. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Or a Texas accent. Or I just, just started doing, uh, in Detroit, started doing, like, a robot character, like RoboCop, <laughs> but RoboNark. Um, <laughs> and that's just to kind of add to the silliness of it, is to, like... And, and not, well, not once, but very few times are people like, what, why are you talking like a idiot, like a moron or like, or even in Detroit? No one said, why are you talking like a robot? <laughs> and, um, and it just, it makes their overreaction to my request, I think that more comical and, and weirdly it makes them seem more juvenile when I'm the one who's acting like, uh, you know, a South Park character, essentially. 
Yeah. How many, how many of your, your interactions would you say end up being positive or the, the major, I mean, you, what you want on film is the negative ones of people freaking out, but how many people are, are, are positive? I mean, I, I have to assume you're going up to quite a few people when you're filming. It, yeah, it's, it's gotten, it's gotten better actually. It's, I, I usually say it's like, it's like 25, 25 and 50 percentage points, meaning 25% are positive. Nice. There was one that I put up, I think on our Instagram just over the weekend where a, a guy and a girl were at a Costco and you, and you could see she was going to put it like in between the spots and he like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. He pointed her to where the cart return was behind them. I witnessed this, walked up to her and said, oh, well, thanks for turning it around. I guess, who's your friend who told you to do that? And he's like, oh, God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> um, so like, I, I'm starting to tag like the, the, the negative reaction videos with those videos just to show you that you don't have to be a screaming violent maniac if you're asked to put your cart back. Um, so like, and then I say another 25% are just the maniacs, the people who will cuss and threaten and uh, try to punch me. There was one we posted uh, like a week or so ago in uh, Oregon where the guy literally took a swing at me. And then I posted, I tagged at the end of that video, the, that, the same parking lot four minutes later where another guy not only returned his own cart, but picked up that first guy's cart and was taking it back with him. So I'm trying to like, I'm trying to balance that more because it really is 50-50 as far as like violent maniacs and really nice people. And the middle 50% are just kind of like, people who don't know what's going on. They're just like, huh, what is this? And they just kind of leave. Uh, so those are, those are roughly the yeah, numbers. Yeah, that's fair. We're, we're, we're at in Oregon, if you don't mind my asking. Uh, that was, uh, I'd never heard of it until I was there. Aloha, Oregon, which was uh, just yep. it's west of Portland, um, right next to Beaverton. I get why there's a Beaverton, Oregon, because there's beavers and, right. and a lot of woods around there. I don't know how many... Uh, Hawaiian folks there are, but enough to call it city. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be surprised. That's a there's good... actually quite a lot of Hawaiian yeah. people in the state. There's <clears throat> kind of, there's almost like a Hawaiian dysphoria here. Surprisingly. Yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, it's not surprising, I guess on the West coast. I mean, that's, this is a, this is a, so you're, you're talking with your friend at work about the things that irk you and, and carts is the, is the main one. Have you thought about uh, filming any of the un, other unwritten areas of courtesy uh, with regard to the weight room? Cause I could get behind, I'm up behind cart narcs 100%. But what about the weight room? Cause that actually does piss me off. It drives me nuts when people do not put their weights back. It's funny. I, I moved recently into a, a pretty nice apartment complex here in LA, and we got a really nice weight room and a and attached to that a big yoga slash a cardio uh, room. And <laughs> I don't want to. They, they say you don't want to poop where you eat, so I don't want to start confronting. You know, I could do it there. I could. Cause people will just they'll just take they'll take the free weight, the dumbbell, just leave it in the middle of the floor and walk off and leave. Um, but I actually printed out these little magnets that that say. Did you return your equipment? And, I've, and there's metal doors, so I put it on the back of the door because it was people just leave yoga mats in the middle of the floor, didn't wipe them down, or at the very least roll them up and put them out of the like. The, and and I, don't, I don't know what it is because like the guys, you're you've obviously working out a little bit, no big deal. Um, but the guys who like grew up around, like say football and wrestling and stuff like those sports in high school, you could see you could tell who those guys and girls are because they're. They're wiping stuff down. They're picking stuff up. They're, you know, letting people work in on machines. And you can tell the people who are like, especially in LA, like kind of want to be Instagram models and or people who just are in there to screw around, you know, because uh, they're leaving junk everywhere and whatever. So um, I would be, I would love to talk to a gym owner who would let me, because it's, it's more of a, you have to like set up a camera basically to watch the person because like with the cart return, you have to wait for them to leave and go somewhere yeah. else. Because I have a feeling if I just did it in like the Planet Fitness down the street, that I would walk up to somebody like, oh no, I was going to go get that. You know, you'd have to, I'd have to kind of like, you yeah, have you to gotta show catch him. Yeah, the completion of the him. act essentially. You gotta catch him. That's... So if you have if you have a gym and you want to have a little fun, uh, hit me up and I'm happy to uh, come out and, that, and set up that, with you. I, I can't wait to watch that video. Someone's going to do it. For sure, someone's <laughs> going to do it. And I definitely agree. I did, I I actually grew up playing football, played a little bit in college and, um, same, same, um, same thought process there. I, I, I do love, 
I love you. You're kind of remind me of like a Larry David type character. You're just you're a stickler. So I kind of want to I want to get to know what are the other things that kind of piss you. What are you a stickler about? What are these other things? I want to see if we're aligned on our on our stickler being a stickler. Yeah, it's yeah. I do get like the like if Larry David wasn't a a frail old man, I think this is the kind of thing he'd be into more. Um, because yeah, he he you do see him like a lot of that show is like weird little things. Sometimes it's his fault. Sometimes yeah. it's just people cutting online or whatever. Give you a chat and cut. Um, this is standard chat and cut. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, the ones I see a lot, I mean, littering's an obvious one. Um, the, God, there's one There's one in traffic that's really been getting me recently. And I just, I was driving around today and it happened. So, uh, for instance, you know, there's a two lane road. And let's say the right lane is blocked by, in this case today, there was a, uh, an a EMS vehicle was there to take care of something at this business. So, as the two lanes pop up, the, the left lane's going, 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 but these two cars behind the ambulance, they got caught, whatever. Now, uh, in, th- in this case, I'm going to make myself sound good, but it happens all the time, is the, the left lane will stop because it sees that these mm-hmm. two cars are caught. Now, the person who has the first move is the rear car because that's the other, pay- the, other the, the left lane went by them first. And what will happens nine times out of 10 is the rear car will pull out and not wait for the front car, who is also stuck, who's in the same position it is, but because they can pull out first, they just zoom. And now the front car, like I see this, and you see it in merging on highways, is the people who are like, I'm a little bit ahead of you. We were both two seconds ago in the same stuck position, but ha ha. Now I'm not stuck, so screw you and zoom. And, you know, there's no real way to catch that um, besides some sort of fast and the furious <laughs> chase. Um, but, yeah, the dog dog poop I see a lot. Um, just, yeah, I, I think littering is what I'm going to be doing probably some kind of spinoff on just because it's tougher to catch. And I've caught it a few times doing cart narcs. There was one in Chicago where this lady just took, like, a, almost full Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. Just She walked into the passengers and on the ground. Um, also they left their carts out and there was one in, uh, in Edison, New Jersey, where a lady, she was done shopping, didn't return her cart, gloves come off on the ground. Uh, so I've caught it in, in real time a few times, but maybe I'll do something that's more dedicated just to, cause I see it, you see it walking around, uh, shopping centers and everywhere in the world where it's like, they've got like a bag of fast food that's just on the ground or they got a sandwich inside and the containers on the ground. So It'll take more lurking, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> but that's a big one. Uh, but I'm open to suggestions. I'm trying to. Or, I mean, I'm trying to think uh, along those lines of of what would be easy to film and capture, really catch people. And well, there's one too that it's maybe a little more dangerous, and I think it's more it's more of a New York City thing. But it, it happens is like the aggressive cat calling. Uh, and you know, some women made some videos a few years back about. You know, she would just put a camera in there and a backpack or whatever and just dudes. Uh, and it was weird because like the dudes are like, they're, they're, they can kind of, they're, they're hiding it by being complimentary, but you know, it's a little, it's a little much. So maybe, I don't know, Captain, Captain, <laughs> Captain Save or something. <laughs> bust out. Aha! You, uh, you could I thought about doing up. one where it's right, right. Exactly. Like you just get a hot girl and then follow her, you know, half a block behind and wait to see what happens. And it's like a little squirt gun, like a, like a cat, like, like a dog or a dog humping the furniture. No, stop it. Something that doesn't, it like cart narcs, like with my magnets that I put on cars, something that's not really a harmful thing, but it hurts their pride. That sort of idea. Um, cause I thought about maybe I could just do it myself, put on, you know, a wig and a pair of tights and a hoodie. But then there's a whole issue with me being called, I'm sure I'd be called, you know, some kind of phobic or something. So I, I think I have to set it up with, uh, a, a quote, yeah, you got to get a bait model. And then I think, you know, if I was going to do it, I think I would cat call back to the dude that was cat calling the girl and be super, yes. yeah, nice super bulge. aggressive. Like, I, I, I don't even know how he's just like, <laughs> hey, bro, can I? <laughs> yeah, what are you Did packing? You pack what you working Let me with? see that dick, bro. Yeah. I want to, you know, something like that. I feel like that would just kind of catch him off guard. Cause um, I got really obsessed with that. Right. There was this and, uh, character on YouTube that he would go out and, and pick fights, and as soon as he got the dude to commit, he would take, he get completely butt ass naked, and be like, "You want some of this? <laughs> every everybody that 
when he gets butt ass naked and starts like just acting, everyone takes off running because that's the last thing that you want to see is some dude with his wiener out trying to fight you. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's uh, I got I wish I, I I feel like I've seen that. But yeah, it's a funny it's a funny idea. Yeah. Illegal, obviously, <laughs> in many places. But I think it's, it's a, a funny idea. Gray area. I think you get away with it, you know. Yeah, it depends. Like, there's a naked, for instance, uh, there are naked bike yeah. rides in a bunch of cities. I know L.A., Portland, a bunch of places have them. Pittsburgh's got one, I believe, this weekend. Um, or Philly, one of the two. So you can be, but those are kind of like chaperone-specific. It's not just like guy on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so you got so you've got the idea. You got a you got a trap model. And then I'm trying to think. I mean, people chew with their mouths open. That drives me insane as well. But I, I mean, I really don't know how you would. I feel like that's kind of boring. Well, there's what's related to that. I was, and it's an analogy I use a lot, is people that leave their trays out at fast food restaurants. Because um, that's the analogy I use with the carts a lot, is people will say, well, there's no law that I have to return the cart. And I'll say, of course not. No one said there was. But it's the it's the system. And you know it's the system. They have the cart return. Many of the cart returns say, please return carts here. Much like at, you know, McDonald's or Chipotle or whatever, they have the trash can and it says, please put trays here. Some people are just like, meh, because they will have an employee to eventually clean up after you, just like an employee will eventually get your cart. Mm -hmm. But you know what the system is and, and you're willfully ignoring it to be lazy. You know, I think selfish. that's fair. But I, I mean, I, I got to confess something, dude. I've definitely broke the cart in our law quite a few times. And if you ever catch me, this is the line that I would use for you. Don't judge. I understand, Agent Sebastian, this is terrible. This is what I would have said. I'd have been like, I'm doing this to stimulate the economy. Because if everyone puts their cart back, we're going to be putting a 16-year-old out of work. And I don't want to do that. That's, yes, what, I, that's uh, what I would have said. I've heard, oh, shit. We've heard that line okay. a number okay, of times good. from people. What's the comeback? And uh, it's it fails it fails the, the sniff test as they say for several reasons. Number one, they uh, the employee will still have a job because they have to go to the cart return mm. to get the cart still. Mm. Number one, so you're not uh, you're not eliminating their job. You'll say, well, their job involves also getting to like other carts. Yeah, true. Number uh, number two, but it's not like it's their only job. I worked that position in, in high school and you know you're you're doing cashier work you're bagging groceries you're stocking you're helping with uh, customer service stuff um and number three number three that really only applies in the past i don't know six eight, six or twelve months we have an insane labor shortage like the unemployment is basically zero or below zero you know the real unemployment rate you, you, there's how many there's places all around the country that are reducing hours, reducing service. Uh, there's all kinds of, like I'll go to a Dunkin' Donuts I've been to where they they, they, they couldn't open up the actual indoor dining area because they didn't have enough people. So if you claim that we don't have enough entry-level jobs, you just don't, uh, yeah, it's, no, it's not real. No, definitely not. Touche. The, then if you would have caught me there, I would have probably went, I'm worried about obesity. And I and I feel like if I put that the cart further away from the, uh, from the corral, that they're going to get an exercise. So I may have went there if I was dealing with UAG. But I know you're a stickler, dude. So what would you say to that? Well, I'd say well, your obesity cure <laughs> is great. Because people, the other, I'll give you a, a one you haven't maybe haven't thought of yet, is they'll say it gives them a chance to get out of the store. Or like, I loved getting out of the store and going to get carts when I, cause it was a chance to like smoke a cigarette or whatever. Yeah, that's great. And if you want to reduce obesity and give the kid a smoke break at the cost of a potentially dinged door or cracked headlight, then I'd say your priorities are a bit upside down. Give me the law, man. I'm, you know what? This it, I'm putting all carts back from this state. Beware people, there are cart narcs out here. All right, and it's not safe. Yeah, the there's not. I uh, trust me. I've literally heard. I mean, I'll, 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 I'm happy to hear more. But there's there's nothing like with with card narcs. I could I can hear the arguments about well the way I'm doing the way I go about it is uh, impolite, unethical, immoral. You can make those arguments because that's a judgment call. But when it comes to the actual logistics about why and how cart returns or, or either or non-returns work i there is not an argument i've heard that holds water. I, I, I think you're right i really do i think it just boils down to people being lazy and 
I just, man, I fucking love what you do, dude. I love what you do. <laughs> well, I should say outside of like, again, there's a, there's a meme that is, goes around a bunch outside of like a true actual emergency or true uh, debilitating condition. Uh, and you'll notice that in none of our videos do those things pop <laughs> yeah, up. None, absolutely none. I mean, people, people create ones like suddenly their kid needs to be picked up from daycare this second or they got to go get their friend from the job right now or blah, 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 blah. My favorite one was uh, here in uh, was in Compton where the woman said, my 90 year old mother's at home. I need to make her dinner. I was like, is she going to is she going to starve in the next 15 seconds? She, I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> you know, I'll give her credit for sticking to it. Obviously, it's ridiculous and doesn't make sense. But, you know, it's that's part of the and people say, oh, well, the, the best part about card narcs is the people flipping out and trying to fight me and kill me. And I get that that's fun for a lot of people. But to me, it's the conversation and like the logic and the reasoning as their head turns. That's the much more interesting thing um, than, you know, the, well, the 100%, freaking percent Because you, you got them. Like, you, you fucking got them in that moment. They're doing something that they know they shouldn't do. And they're trying to explain their way out of it. And here you are, this this fake task force of the cart narcs, right? Real task force. Real task force. Excuse me. Excuse me. This real task force that no one knows anything about. And you're calling them on their shit. And you've got this, you're throwing magnets at them. You're writing shit down. And they're just like, what? what? Is this real? You can't, I'm not, am I in trouble? (laughs) It's ridiculous, dude. So I. It it is very much a like. Yeah, middle school or, or getting busted by your parents sort of thing. Because, yeah, and I tell people, like, I, I do, I come at it from, a, like you said, an advantage. I've caught them, you know, with their pants down. They they know they're wrong. I know they're wrong. But because of that, we t- I, I try to be as magnanimous about that and say, you know what? The cart returns right there. Uh, let me help you out. Because they'll say I didn't, you know, like the guy in, um, the guy who tried to, who p- tried to punch me in Oregon the other day. He's he first he tried the I did, I don't see it oh it's it's right over there here I'll, I can show you and then he's like eh. and, you know because it, it's you know they'll 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 feign an excuse about that stuff but uh, you know and every once in a while there was one here in uh, Oxnard California which is like an hour west of L A where the guy he showed me his knuckles where he had tattooed jujitsu on his knuckles which is just shows you I mean look people have made comments in the YouTube video about how smart and or worth it that is. I mean, I don't think Royce Gracie no, tattooed jujitsu on his knuckles. But after a, a like five minute back and forth about how he very veiled threats about how I'm a jujitsu, blah, blah, blah. I could break your arm. I could put you to sleep, et cetera, et cetera. He finally returned his cart. And it was, and, and I think it was cause I, cause he gave all the excuses and blah, 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 blah. And then he, the threats and stuff, but he got out and returned it. And it's funny because somebody who knew who I was was watching the whole thing behind me. And so as soon as he got out, the guy's like, yay. <laughs> um, so it's not, it, it, people are redeemable and we try to give them every option to redeem themselves until, yeah, until they don't. And as someone that's a member of that community, like that's not the ethos of what that martial art is about. It's not about threatening. And that's what, that's what people are saying in the comments mostly is that, you know what? If he didn't, tr- if he wasn't whatever he is, you know, a yellow belt, he may have just flipped you off and tried to fight you. But uh, I don't, I don't know. I've never, cause I, I've, I've done some, not much of, you know, martial arts stuff. And I don't know anybody who has like karate or, t- or Muay Thai on their knuckles. It seems <laughs> yeah, kind of it a does. dopey thing, yeah, he, you know, douchey thing to do, but Hey, he did the again, right he did thing. The right he thing. redeemed himself after threatening, uh, you know, the task force, which is, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty serious crime to be honest, you know? Yeah, yeah. So breaking somebody's arm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, so, are you? Or do you do any stand-up comedy or anything like that? Uh, no, but I, because um, yeah, I, I try to, I try to put a silly or funny uh, spin on it to kind of keep it light. I could be out there screaming at people and, th- and you know, doing my own veiled threats, but I think that by being f- as funny as I can be with the, the mouth siren and the silly magnets and the, and like the, the boy scout sort of verbiage, you know, that it helps. But no, I, I do a lot of, uh, I do, I started card narcs and talking to people cause I do a lot of practical comedy stuff, uh, in general. So I'm, I'm used to talking to the public 
And people are like, well, how do you know what to say? First off, I do this a lot, but also it's it's a lot about listening, which is more of um that's more of like an improv skill than a stand-up comedy skill. Is, you know, more like a, you know, uh, like the people who are on SNL, the Will Ferrells and the Tina Fey's of the world, like that style of comedy uh, as opposed to stand-up. Um, but I'm, you know, I do, I do enjoy good stand-up comedy oh, yeah. too. Me as well. So how did you, how did you end up getting on Dr. Phil? Somebody reached out. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know who alerted whom, but it was uh, one of their producers hit, hit me up and said, hey, would you like to come on? I said, absolutely. Sure. Sounds like fun. Um, and uh, it went from there. It, um, yeah, I don't know. I never heard that like, and I'm sure they wouldn't want to say if like somebody was a fan or somebody's friend of a friend. Because when uh, the way it worked out the behind the scenes of that is the, I forget, we taped on like whatever it was, <clears throat> Tuesday, but the weekend before we pre-taped all the, like me talking about the <laughs> ethics of cart returning and like the action shots and showing the, you know, the wand that I use. Uh, and a lot of those crew members are very much of like, they're appreciative, like I'm a fan, blah, blah, blah. Can I get a sticker? So, uh, and they were, you know, behind the scenes, they were very, very nice to me, complete, even though Dr. Phil was uh, rather aggressive in his line of questionings. Um, but yeah, all the crew and the staff are very cool and, uh, and we're fans, uh, to a large extent. So that was nice. So I guess one of them recommended it. And so uh, you and said he was aggressive there. with this line of questioning. Was he like trying to, was he trying to make you look bad? You, well, yeah, he was either playing the devil's advocate or definitely he didn't at, at almost no point in the entire, <laughs> it's not like the heavy <laughs> medicine. At almost no point, uh, or the Billy Madison, it, uh, did he side with me. It was, I don't like you for this. <laughs> uh, I don't like you for that. Let me bring on this other guest who's going to not like you for this. Let me bring on another guest. And I, it was like, it was segment after segment of him coming at me, which I'm fine with. Like I said, I'm willing to defend the principle of it. Uh, that's not a problem. And uh, like I said, he was off like i said uh, he's off off camera he was nice he said thank you for coming thanks for bringing your mom blah 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 so yeah, everyone's polite and nice at, on dr phil but his but literally every point he made was to try to discredit me and and uh, uh you know depends on who you you talk to that you is, or not. that is very interesting to me because i i wouldn't i would have thought that he would have just done a, a bit like like it was funny or you know maybe did they tell you that that was gonna go down Oh, not shit. initially, and I it make it makes sense. I get it because they don't want me to be like, well, I don't want to go in there and have to get roasted for <laughs> forty five minutes or whatever. Um, but but before, like the day of, he was like, okay, uh, Doctor Phil is going to bring on this person to talk about this and this person to talk about that, um, and this person who you confronted will be coming on. So I knew the day <laughs> of some- that there would there would at least be <laughs> there would be at least some pushback. Um, but again, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that they totally blindsided me by any way, uh, point. Um, cause like I said, I, I didn't bring up anything that I, and his, and his arguments weren't anything I hadn't heard before. And like you said, I, and I told him uh, to some extent on the show that his sort of whole deal is take responsibility, get your <clears throat> crap together. You know, don't catch me outside, uh, <laughs> respect your parents. Like his whole deal has been kind of like, get your crap together. And then he spent the most of the episode telling people that they don't have to get their crap together. And I'm bad <laughs> for saying they should. <laughs> How'd he take that? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, like I said, it was a good experience. It was fun. It was, it's, uh, it was, it was an interesting debate, yeah. so to speak. So I was, I was, I'm always good. I'm always up to, to debate anybody on stuff oh, yeah, like yeah, this. hundred percent, man. <clears throat> I, um, have you done any more like television interviews or anything like that? Uh, here and there, nothing like nothing that big. Uh, it's funny. I, I went up to Victoria, British Columbia, did a, uh, an episode and then the guy on Canadian T- CTV, which I guess is like their, I think it's like their government, yeah, like yeah. their PBS kind of, yeah. but they do the news. Um, he did a piece on it because he saw, he's like, oh my God, because Victoria is, you have to take a ferry to get out there. It's kind of in the middle of a small little town. Um, and then like, uh, I did the Adam Carolla show, but he and I have some history. Uh, then I did, um, 
the H3 podcast, a bunch of podcast stuff. Fox News did a, a small piece on me. Um, but yeah, here and there, but nothing that's, that's, oh, and I've got like some interview with uh, like the public radio station in Connecticut coming up at some point. Uh, yeah, but little stuff like that. Uh, just, you, know, all, you mentioned a little there. bit of history with Adam Carolla. I, I, was this, is this good history or bad history? <clears throat> oh, yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, just stuff being around the same people. Like we, so I used to work in Atlanta with some people that worked with him in LA. And then I was on a game show with him, like, I, or he was like the celebrity, it was like celebrity password. This was like a long time ago. Um, and there was, uh, and so he was replaying that audio. And then I've met him just a few times, just being in like radio, radio yeah, and podcast yeah, yeah. industry stuff. Uh, just, we crossed paths a few times, but you know, just, so he had me on to talk about that and talk about card narcs and stuff. Cause his, his co-host Gina Grad. Is a, is a big fan of Carton Arcs, and she's tagged us in some stuff before. Uh, okay, all right. That, yeah, that means. I mean, I, I, I found out about Adam, Adam Carolla when I was like, probably twelve years old, listening to late night talk show, uh, and the, it was him and Doctor Drew Love Line. Man, that shit. I learned a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have learned at that point <laughs> in my life. But so. <clears throat> Very solid. Well, I guess a lot of a lot of a lot of SCD yeah, stuff, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I guess because he was the comic relief on that. But yeah, he's a no, he's a, a nice fella. As we've always got, we've uh, gotten along to whatever small degree that we have interacted. Yeah, that's, that's that's awesome, man. All right, so like, where do you see where do you see this going? How long do you want to do this? Um. Well, until no <laughs> card is left behind, obviously. <laughs> but um. I don't know. It's because it is, it's one of those things where like, and people bring this up a lot. They'll say, well, eventually you're going to meet the wrong person who just doesn't give a whatever. You know, yeah, I've got a bulletproof vest that was donated by a police officer from Baton Rouge. And they say, well, one of these days, somebody's not going to be so nice and blah, 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 blah. And I get that. That's true. I mean, that's true in everything. It's, you know, you could get hit by a bus. Now it's a lot, you have a greater chance of getting hit by a bus if you're out and <laughs> if you're mm -hmm. out running around in yeah. traffic, obviously, <laughs> which is, you know, so I get that point, uh, and um, I don't know, for as long as the internet will have me, I guess, or, or people, you know, will, will follow the cause, um, it's, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll just, you know, who knows? And to, you know, it's, I don't have an end date on anything at this point, because really, it's, that's kind of the nice thing about doing stuff online is even if you're not doing it for money, which I certainly wasn't at the beginning of this, nor, nor am I now, um, it's, uh, you can just do a passion project and just do it. And if no one, if you don't have an audience, who cares? You can just have fun doing it for yourself. Cause I, I honestly do believe in the cause. Yeah. I, that, I think that that's the, the best thing about the internet. The best aspect of it is like this project we've, we've been working on it creatively for two years and <clears throat> longer than that, but ser taking it seriously, probably two years. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was been it's been a little over four years total, and then I kind of like a little like a little over two years ago is when we I put all like the its own little like show so, so you know YouTube and Facebook and blah 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 Instagram accounts together. Um, so it's so it's more dedicated and focused. That's the other great thing about the internet is you could have these and I love YouTube for that. You have these tiny little channels. I'm I'm watching this one guy. I love. I think he's either Scottish or Irish, and all he does is he buys broken Game Boy games and other electronics and fixes them. And that's all he does. He says, okay, let's take this apart. Here, the circuit board's cracked here, and this needs to be resoldered here. And you couldn't do that on CBS or NBC because <laughs> it's so specialized, but you can do it on YouTube and you can have, he can have, you know, millions of fans, um, which is, you know, hopefully something that Cartonarx is doing as well is taking these little things and just finding whatever audience Absolutely. exists How long it. did it take for you to find your audience? Uh, well, it was because we've been doing it for like, like I said, about a year and a half or so just on like the radio and here and there uh, as just like a little, maybe every other month or, or so. And then it's really, it didn't take very long at all once I created like the, the dedicated YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, channels, Instagram. Uh, and those just kind of shot off within less than a year. Um, but it wasn't. But I, like I said, I had practiced doing it, essentially. I'd already 
had most of like the magnets and all the stuff and like all the silly noises and stuff. So um, it's like with any any creative, I guess, endeavor, creative <laughs> endeavor is you kind of, you know, you try something you're like, oh, what if I tried this? And that either works or it doesn't work. And, you know, you kind of you build up like that. Um, so, yeah, once I put everything together, it was it was really quick. But I but I definitely had but some were you, Now, when you say practice, were you were you just going out and doing this and not filming? OK. Oh, no, because it was it was a, a quote, a radio segment okay to begin with so i had always recorded it although since then i've started just like randomly not just do it just doing it when <laughs> you know it's funny i was uh I God, where was i somewhere in pennsylvania where didn't have a camera nothing like that and i saw this lady just left the cart out behind her truck and so i like very slowly grabbed the cart and was like walked it and uh, right in front of her truck i was going to the cart return but just very slowly it's like she leans out what the f is your problem it's like and i was it, it being obviously dumb saying, God, some lazy person just <laughs> left this cart loose on this hill and I, it could have hurt somebody. So I'm taking it back to the cart return. And she's like, and she got that I was mocking her. I was like, oh, F you, mother F, get out of my way. And it's funny too, because she had open space behind her. She's like, well, you could reverse if you liked. It's like, well, I'm going that way. So <laughs> but this was not, it was not recording any of this. I was just doing it because I was, I, it's one of those things where like, I don't know, if you're like a chef, you see, food ingredients different ways or if you you know if you're in cars you see you notice things about so i notice things about carts mm -hmm. it's just, and it gets in your it's like the matrix it's all you see um but yeah no i to get back to the original point yeah it was recorded and i didn't really know the first thing i did i didn't have any of the get up or anything or I didn't even call it cart narcs i would just ask people oh hey why'd you leave that there and they oh my god you know all the excuses and the defensiveness and all that stuff and so from there uh, I was like, well, what if I made a funny voice? What if I was a funny voice or, or uh, you know, made a silly siren? Or what if I gave them a, quote, ticket? Because uh, I used yes. to have, like, these little business cards that I would, you know, give, you know, give people. Um, and so that's what I mean. That's how it kind of, like, built as far as, like, oh, what if, tried this? you know, what if I did this accent in New York? What if I pretended I was a robot in Detroit? You know, kind of like that, that. That's how, I guess, it kind of, like, let's try this and, and see if it and works. And then once you started trying the other elements of this, it, it, it kind of, you got... You caught you caught a wave, right? Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know if I have to look at like here. I can maybe this is uh, some interesting. Let's look at uh, let's go to my little YouTube analytics and see see what the see if it'll tell me uh, like subscribers by month. I don't know if it'll do that, but yeah, it was it was pretty quick because uh, I I think it it uh, it's it definitely resonated with people like it's because if you look as the, the reference i use um is there's a is a there's a peanuts cartoon from 1990 where uh woodstock the little bird is got a little teeny cart and he just or she just leaves it up against the tree and then snoopy's like oh one of those people that don't return the carts and this was like october 6 1990 so it's people have had this observation but it's it's what if no one really you know what is what are people doing about it, essentially? And I, I was the first one to really do something about it. Um, let's see. As far as I got my viewers, unique viewers, subscribers. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it really kind of popped up. Well, I guess maybe like December of 2020 is where it kind of like it was going. Cause I started, what, February 2020. And then, you know, things will go like Reddit, Reddit will pick up a video or it'll go whatever virus, semi-viral somewhere else or somebody will post it. Yeah, I'm seeing like there's little pops like in April of 2020 and December of 2020 and uh, ever since then, you know, so it's just uh, it's a uh, it's a common thing and, and enough people like it. And hopefully I'm doing it in, enter in an entertaining <laughs> way as opposed, like I said, there's people who try to do it in like the mean aggressive, like you better put your car back, mother effer. Um, and that's interesting. It can be fun, but it, it really takes some of the, like the way I do it, almost all the onus is on the person who left their card out. Like I'm, you, you know, there's not too much you can say about what I do other than I put a magnet yeah, on someone's exactly. car. You're not being combative in any way, shape or form. You're, you're being very, very, very passive. Very, very, well, you are being very <laughs> passive. That's fair. Very, which I'm fine. I get it. I, they, you know, they're like, well, what if they just let them leave? Well, then they wouldn't learn the lesson, you know. And I and I do let them leave. No one, nothing's stopping no, them. No, th but that, there that, you go. 
I think that's my favorite part is the ego where they they go to leave and then you like you toss a magnet on their car. What the fuck did you put on my car? Did you, did you put something on my car? And it just <laughs> yeah. it just snowballs. Yeah, it's from a, there. It's a, you could tell. It was it was funny. There was one in North Hollywood a couple of weeks ago where. I had this giant magnet. It's like 20 inches by 30 inches. And I go to put on this guy's hood and he's like, he's holding me here. I'm like, I don't think I'm that strong, sir. And just by touching your hood, I don't think I'm like, I don't have a force field in my hands, but he was, and he got out and he was screaming at me. Uh, I think he was a sovereign, what is known as a sovereign citizen. These are people who they believe that the, uh, the laws of, you know, whatever country they're in, in this case, the United States don't apply to them. And because he, he kind of started rattling off, dubious legal concepts at me um despite beside the whole magna thing uh, and it was is so that's that's one of the things like with real people is you just never know what you're going to get and uh, sometimes you get yes, these funny weirdos you, you definitely do what what, st- what store do you think on average are you finding the most weirdos at uh well i mean walmart's the <laughs> yeah, okay. easy easy answer and it's accurate um because it's just a lot of volume it is um people who maybe don't care about other people as much although i i've done plenty of stuff at like high-end stores or people have been dicks there too you know nice lots of lexuses and maseratis and bmws and mercedes that have are are being thoughtless as well so it's not just a, a, a you know a lower class thing but i think just because walmart is kind of the the catch-all for for everybody um and then dollar general is one i would like to do more at but they just have such small lots and uh, you know tiny it's just they don't have the same the same throughput um but yeah walmart i think is just the easy answer it's funny i went to when i was in victoria in canada we were going to some of like the local stores there's one called canadian tire and some other stuff um and they were you know there was maybe one or two carts at those places but the woman who I am friends with, who was my like local tour guy, is like, well, you go to Walmart, you're going to find them. And I'm like, well, okay, let's go to Walmart. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, didn't, didn't take, take long. long. Uh, uh, do, you have a, do you have a preferred, do you have preferred cart corrals, preferred carts of choice? I mean, you've been doing this for a while, so I figured we got to, we got to kind of cover some of these questions. Yeah, cart, cart wise, I think the, the, the nicest ones are the, the big plastic target ones. They just, they're quiet. They, they ride smoothly. Many times they have a cup holder and or a cell phone holder in them. Uh, they're plastic, so they're less likely to cause damage. Um, uh, they, again, they, I think the smooth ride on those yeah. is the thing yeah. I enjoy the most. Um, and then as far as the cart returns, the best one, I'm going to, I'm, I hope I don't get, I believe it's Safeway. Safeway, which is a West Coast, mostly you see it in Oregon and, and parts of like Central California, um, and I've done, I've done little videos on this where they take their, uh, they take their cart returns and they line them up all parallel across the entire lot and they're double barrel, two sided. And they have these giant, like you've seen the little mm-hmm. cart re- pushing little, um, you know, I don't know what you call them, robots, whatever, but they have big ones. And the dudes, if you ever see them, they'll have, it's gotta be 50 carts on these things. Cause they could just go all the way through all the lanes and because they're all lined up, in so they they're very professional about how they do it and return it and return stuff. Um, I'm pretty. It could be, sure. be Winco. Check make sure you give them the. It, it's because Winco. Uh, yes, when, yeah, that's right. I'm like, Winco. I don't yes. think it's, yeah, safe, it's not safe. Like, that it's sounds Winco. like a Winco to me. Yeah, yeah, that is Winco. You are correct. Yeah, uh, not not uh, fully nationwide, but yeah, you see a lot in Oregon, Northern California. Uh, yeah, Winco is the. You, you, you done anything there. at uh, Home Depot? Lowe's done a few Home Depots. Um, they're they're fine, you know. It's uh, I did one in uh, I did one in the Home Depot oh. in Maui, <laughs> of all places, just for to be because they're one thing I love about the fun the the inter- most interesting thing about Hawaii is they have wild chickens. So you'll be walking through the Home Depot in Maui, and there will be a family of chickens just running around doing whatever. Um, they were brought in, you know, a couple hundred years ago, and they proliferated and. I guess the local cats don't get them. There are no coyotes on Hawaii, I don't believe. Um, oh, I They're everywhere. So that's like the fun little thing. Oh, there's chickens here. Just hanging out, doing whatever. Um, but yeah, Home Depot's fine. Uh, do a, f- a few here and there. I try to get the local stores. Um, 
So, like, in the southeast, it'll be Kroger, and, uh, uh, and you know, in the in Colorado, it's called King's Supers, but it's spelled mm-hmm. with two, R, two O's. Um, there's Fry's in, like, Arizona, Smith's in uh, Nevada, you know, it kind of... I like finding the those those in the Wegmans in, in upstate New York. I like finding like the the stuff that's has been Oh, okay. Flair. Yeah, I, I I that makes sense. I'm just now I'm trying to think of like I feel like Trader Joe's is everywhere. So, um you ever don't Yeah, what's that a few what, Trader a Joe's? They they tend not to have the larger parking lots. Um but yeah, when I do find a bigger Trader Joe's, maybe it's part of a bigger like uh, strip mall or shopping center. I've, I've done a few of those. Ever done, yeah. In fact, the one of the probably the most viewed video I have, at least on YouTube, was at a Trader Joe's, where the guy chased me around the parking lot for fifteen minutes uh, and it ran, chased me past where the car return was, <laughs> in order to prove uh, to whatever that he was right and I was wrong. <laughs> was he trying to hurt you or like what? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. He. Uh, it was funny because he's. So he's got he's driving this beat up truck and he left his cart next to his passenger door. So close in fact that he couldn't even open his door all the way to get into his own truck. So if you can't open your door to get it to get in, what's the next person going to do? You're you're just being a dick. You're leaving your cart and it's making it harder for the next person. Um so I go over there and I this is when I just started using the magnets and I like well and he kind of laughs me off at first. I've been up since 4 a.m. or whatever. And then as soon as the magnet goes on, again, this truck's peed up. It's, who cares? He, but that's the ego thing. He's not going to let it happen. So he chases me. Or he, walk, he walks me back, you know, aggressively past where the cart return is. And then he says, you're this close to get to being on the ground. And I said uh, something to the effect of, well, you, I don't think you can catch me. And he goes, why? Because I'm a fat asshole. And then, as, you know, I was just trying to play along. I said, well, sir, we don't body shame and blah, 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 blah. And then like, He's like trying to pull the manager in and like just people walking by on the street trying to pull them into the arguments. Like this guy did this and this and that. And then at one point we're on the side. And again, this is 10 minutes later. We're on the sidewalk outside the Trader Joe's. And he's like, he's like, oh, he sees like that I'm wearing the GoPro on my chest. And he's like, oh, are you to put this on YouTube? And he's, that takes like five or six steps. And I'm like, I'm playing a character like the, the boy scout. Like, let's test out the running skills. And I'm like, I'm. 50 feet away and he's like he stopped running <laughs> he's like not gonna but yeah he he certainly um they call it assault and battery right so assault is the credible threat uh, lawyers can can correct me on this or help me uh, be more precise but the assault is the credible mm-hmm. threat of violence like if i walk up to you with my fist raised and i'm very angry and i'm gonna say i'm gonna punch you that's assault the battery is the, the battery punching, the, yeah. the beating and the punching and the whatever so he definitely committed assault. Um, and by the way, I've never pressed charges on anybody uh, for that sort of assault and battery, even though it's happened to me many times. Um, but yeah, he just tried to beat me up, threatened to beat me up. Um, but uh, in, all in all, uh, I don't know Do if you learned this lesson. Do you think you keep doing this because you get like a little jolt of adrenaline? I mean, you have to. You have it's to. It's funny. <clears throat> yeah, because people talk about that. Like, aren't you scared or did it give you a rush? And the sad truth of it is, oh, not anymore. shit, you don't <laughs> even like, get a rush anymore. Well, it's like, like I would get like butterflies initially, but um, talking about like martial arts and stuff, I started doing like that sort of training to kind of, because I never, I'd done sports, rugby and football and stuff. So I'm used to like hitting with my body, but I'd never really dealt with. How do you deal with somebody mm-hmm. throwing punches and defend yourself in that respect? And once I started doing that, uh, the whole like threat of getting beat up really lost its edge. Uh, and like I mentioned, the guy in uh, Oregon from a co- couple weeks ago, he gets out of his car and he, for him, full on sprints at me with his arm raised. So I knew mm-hmm. where the punch was coming from. All I just did was like that. And it didn't even like bruise my my forearm. So... And which made him, of course, even feel stupider because here he is in full, like, 10 out of 10 rage mode. And I'm just like, eh, no, nah, I blocked your attack, sir. Um, now let's talk about the cart. <laughs> so I'm always like, I'm never fighting people. I'm never engaged. And people say, well, why don't you fight, you, you puss? And I'm like, I'm not going to beat someone up, even if they are clearly in the wrong and they start the fight <laughs> over a cart. Like, this is not about that. This is about being civil and polite to each other. <laughs> 
in face of extreme yes. violence. I gotta so, say, I gotta say, with all all of the videos I've watched, I've I, I will confess, I do very much enjoy your YouTube channel, and I. Uh, the one of the videos that was more recent, um, I can't recall where, but it was a guy in like a, he was in like a black uh, sedan that had been like lowered and something, and you you had the you got the flags now. I don't know if those are suction or magnetic, but that's that's brilliant. I loved the guy's excuse too that he was from somewhere that that's not part of the culture or something. Oh yeah, that was here in uh, in uh, like the said the desert area of. Uh California and it got same same deal where he had not even like tried to like put his cart up against the curb or whatever it was just fully blocking the door of the car next or the truck next to him and he kind of tries to ignore me for a little bit and then like like you're saying he's he goes um man you don't know where my family's from and of course I'm I'm a smart ass and I'm like with are they from the land of people who don't return their carts or the land of lazy I forget what I said exactly but um but yeah, then he drive, uh, throw the magnet on. He gets off, throws it out, and I, I think that's what really pisses him off is that I, I don't take mm-hmm. no for an answer. Essentially, like, oh, you threw my well, first magnet on the ground where I have five more right here, and so then he's like, well, uh, he's not going to give up. So he drives a little bit away. I've also got this flag, uh, which says the same thing. I don't return my shopping cart like a jerk. It's <laughs> maybe two feet, and then I just walk up to where he is because he's in traffic can't drive away (laughs) suction it on he drives away a little bit and what what we didn't show in the video is there was a couple who were fans uh who were watching the whole thing like yeah and i talked to them afterward gave them a sticker or whatever um but they were just they were watching and they were just like man i i can't believe these people really behave like this in public and it's like yeah these these videos are real real life unfortunately that's That's insane do you think i mean do you think that that goes to to show a little bit about our society as a whole is is the fact that people f- will freak out uh, on you for just trying to you know tell you know tell people sometimes a little argumentatively or, or uh, what's the word argumentatively is not the wrong sarcastically confrontational to put, you know, to, put oh, yeah. the, to, to put their carts away like do, 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 do you, are you worried about the state of our society? Well, I think it's number one, yeah, somewhat. Uh, but the, the, the most telling thing about that is that the comments I get from other parts of the world, in, it's especially like Norway, Sweden, uh, the, Finland, they'll say, this would never happen in my country because we just take our cards back. Like to even leave it out well, is time unthinkable. Out. Time See out. That I'm push back on that one right there. I, uh, yeah, the I lived system, in right? Denmark and I've li- been all over Scandinavia and there's a coin system. So they want to get their money back, those bastards. Right. And so, yeah, what, what you're referring to is if we have it here in the States at Aldi, where you put it in a quarter here and it unlocks the cart from the one in front of it. And then when you put your cart back, you get your quarter back. And a lot of Europe does have that system. But when I toured, I went to from London up to Edinburgh and back. And not every chain does have that system. They have, they have, for instance, Costco's there where the, the carts are free, free, free roaming, free range carts. And even then, even then, I saw just maybe one or two loose carts, and I stopped at a, like I said, a dozen stores, just because it's it's ingrained in the culture that we don't leave our carts out. I get messages from like Japan and other places like that, where you know Belgium, where they said, e- e- like even when they don't have the coin system, like it's just not a possibility that we would do that, which shows you that it is a culture thing. In Canada too, Canada, um, it's not as good as like the UK, but it's definitely not as bad uh, as the US. And it's just a culture thing. You you don't have to behave like a thoughtless jerk. You can, if your neighbors and your family and your friends are doing the right thing, it rubs off on you and it it goes across, you know, the country. And, And when you don't, hold people accountable. It doesn't. Uh, it's like I was talking about the guy in uh, in uh, Carlsbad the other day who told his friend to go and turn it back. And then when I showed up, he's like, oh, card narcs. Is that, if he wasn't there and he hadn't used that peer pressure, it would be just another cart. I think out. that this is a perfect place to end this. You're saving the world one card at a time. <laughs> Well, thank you. That's, that's, that's the most gratifying message I ever get or, is like, I used to be a lazy bones but after seeing your videos, it made me think, 
Uh, and that's the most, if people say you're not changing anybody's mind, card and arts, and I, I disagree. I have, I've seen it in literally, I've seen it in action and I see it uh, at least anecdotally through the messages. Yeah, you're truly again. doing God's work. Honestly. You're doing the Lord's work, sir. Keep it up. All right. Agent Sebastian, tell the Thank good you. folks where they can find you. Yeah, it's at Cartnarks on every platform except for, and I get this l- literally every time I'm out Cartnarking, as uh, especially younger people will say, "Oh, I know, I saw you on TikTok." Cart, you, know, I, you can look it up right now, and I'm sure uh, at Cartnarks on TikTok does not exist. It did exist for like six or eight months or so, and then was banned. Wait, what? Or uh, yes, now there are Cartnarks videos on TikTok, like fan accounts and stuff. We'll do compilations and reaction videos and things like that, which I'm. It's that's great. Uh, but TikTok, because I noticed one day that like six or eight of my videos got pulled down and the, the warning was something to the effect of, this is like a challenge that could get mm. you hurt, which I know TikTok had to deal with a lot with teenagers doing whatever, the light your hair on fire challenge <laughs> or whatever. And in, in all my videos, never once have I said, hey kids, go do this, go be a card narc yourself. In fact, I say the opposite. I say, this is uh, this is da- this is potentially dangerous, and I guess t- someone at TikTok and I found a couple employees, and no one will write me back. Um, so it's weird. He's that there are Cartnarks videos on TikToks, TikTok with millions of views, but there is no official Cartnarks account because uh, we're apparently quote too dangerous. Well, for I mean, to be honest, this, <laughs> how many years of training did it take to to become a Cartnark? The selection process alone is it's pretty. Yeah, yeah well, I say it's four and four, four years undergrad and four years of the academy. Uh, but really, the, the number one thing is just not ta- not taking BS, and you got to be kind of fast. <laughs> you don't have to be that fast, but like just you know, like if you can do a six minute mile. That's better than ninety nine percent of the population out there. I was gonna uh, say, are you? People, is that natural speed? Or are you train? Are you training speed too? You no, 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 no. Naturally, work naturally very mediocre. But no, I, I, it's a number of years ago. I just decided, like, I want to be able to run a five minute mile, uh, you know, on a treadmill or whatever. And I just, it just every day went and just went and found a good treadmill that can go up to 12 or whatever. That's part of actually why I picked this, this apartment complex that they had like the nice 12 mile per hour plus treadmills. Um, and you know, it's something, it's something you can get better at, you know, you just do it for a 10th of a mile one day and 11th and just, you know, rep it out like anything else. It's, uh, it's not super tough. And again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going up against the Usain Bolts of the world. I'm going up against Rando at the grocery store. <laughs> Well, keep keep doing the Lord's uh, Lord's work, Agent Sebastian, and uh, <clears throat> I'd love to do this again, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, keep keep the keep keep on keeping on keep uh, keep the world safe. John, you're gonna have to cut this out, dude. I- <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for having me, and it's always it's good to uh, to to have people who see what I'm doing, and at least get the message and get the humor behind it. Cause that's, that's like the funniest, like, t- cause it's like 90, 10, 90% of people are totally with it. They get how silly it is uh, to react the way people are reacting. But there is that 10% who is just, they either, they don't get the humor or they just hate it for whatever their, their personal reason is they're like, no, you cart son of a bitch. <laughs> in fact, if you look at like Instagram comments and YouTube comments are almost all, but not all, mostly uh, positive, but for whatever reason on Facebook, there's this like hardcore group of, I don't know, however many people, 50 people out of hundreds, couple hundred thousand who are like, this cart narc mother effer, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know if it's because Facebook's for old people or whatever. <laughs> it's for old people, man. That's what it is. But it's fu- cause it's funny because like then my, like the real fans will get on there and argue with them. And it's just funny watching like this, pe- the misspellings and the weird Th- veiled threats it's, it's it can be quite entertaining uh, so again that's mostly just on the facebook page though you, for for whatever reason do you think people are so aggressive and shitty sometimes because they they don't understand the consequences of what getting in a fight actually could do to them i think that's true and because you see it I, I think the number one culprit these days are football nfl games and baseball games too, to some extent. But you see, every we're about to start the NFL season again here. Mm-hmm. And hold me every, back, bro. Hold me back. Yeah, oh, every those. Sunday there'll be a bunch of you'll see. We'll see the videos from probably almost every stadium in America of just like you said, some fat guy throwing a beer at somebody else, toppling over. I I don't like. Yeah, it's either they don't they don't see the and people get hurt, people die. There was a outside of. The Rams stadium here last year, some some 49ers fan had come down for that playoff game, and he was in a, either is still or was in a serious coma 
uh, because he was jawing off and the other guy was jawing off. And yeah, there's no reason outside of, much like leaving your cart, there's no reason outside of a serious threat to get into a street fight about a football game being played by people that don't know and don't, well, I mean, don't care, but they don't know who you are, never know know who you are. For teams you don't play for, just you happen to be born or live in the same city as the games are played. It's... Yeah, street fights are dangerous, people. Uh, don't do them. Yeah, don't do them. Don't do them at all. And also, put your cart back. At also all that, yes. Put your cart back. So, cart narcs on all the major platforms besides TikTok. Uh, you can find me on TikTok. It's just not me. It's just not him. All right. All right, Agent Sebastian. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Cart out.